There are many choices to make over a cropping rotation that may have legacy impacts to the end of the current rotation and out into future multiple rotations. For example, how the previous rotation was harvested, if we add fertiliser, and what rotation length to plan for. These legacies may be short term or long term. Long term trials can help answer some of these questions around long term site sustainability and test the accuracy of projections. The Long Term Sustainable Productivity Trial Series, also known as the LTSP, is one example of how we have benefited from the investment in the trial series over three decades ago. This trial series was installed to look at the impact of harvest residue removal on long-term nutrient and productivity sustainability, and if the addition of fertiliser could amend the nutrient removed with these harvest treatments. Our LTSB trial series is part of a global network of trials looking at the impact of harvest residue removal, long-term nutrient supply and productivity. So New Zealand planted forests have a range of nutrient capital, not all sites equal. This figure here shows five planted forest sites and the range in forest ecosystem nitrogen stocks including the soil down to one metre. What we notice is that the majority of the nitrogen is in the soil and can range greatly between sites. For example, at Woodhill, we have about 1,000 kilograms of nitrogen per hectare in the soil, compared to Berwick, where we have 12,000 kilograms of nitrogen per hectare. The above ground trees and forest floor show much less range in nitrogen stocks compared to the soil and are all below 1,000 kilograms of nitrogen per hectare. Between sites, I would like to point out the difference in the contribution of the forest floor to the overall ecosystem nitrogen stock. For example, at Wood Hill, the forest floor makes up 21% of that ecosystem's nitrogen, compared to Berwick, where the forest floor makes up 2% of that ecosystem's nitrogen. Therefore, the removal of the harvest residues at Woodhill will impact the site nutrient stocks the most. With different harvesting methods, we are exporting nutrients off-site. This figure shows how much nutrient is removed from the site with three different harvesting methods, from stem-only removal through to the removal of everything, the whole tree plus the forest floor. We found at the end of rotation that the forest floor had recovered from complete removal at the beginning of the rotation. There was no significant difference between nutrient stocks between the whole tree removal and the stem only removal treatments. We also found that soil carbon and soil nitrogen stocks were negatively impacted at sites with low nutrients after whole tree plus forest floor removal. So what happened when we added mineral fertiliser, mostly nitrogen, at very high experimental rates? We found that fertiliser addition could increase nutrient stocks. However, the addition of mineral fertiliser may not replace the negative impact on soil fertility with severe organic matter removal, and that includes the forest floor removal. For example, the removal of the whole tree plus the forest floor removed about 700 kilograms of nitrogen per hectare, of which 500 of that was in the forest floor and the tree crown. So it's not a simple case of adding 700 kilograms of nitrogen in the form of, for example, urea back again, because we need to consider precision management to maximise on-site retention and crop uptake to get that nitrogen back into that organic cycle. <coughs> 